In this video, we'll discuss some of the very basics about circuits. Electricity is the physical phenomenon underlying the topics in this course. Even though we interpret electrical signals as simple representations of logic, it is important to have at least some idea of physical concepts going on behind the scenes. You will certainly dive deeper into these topics in later circuits or physics courses. You may know from chemistry that atoms, the tiny particles that make up nearly everything in the observable world, contain protons and neutrons clustered in the nucleus, with electrons zipping around the space outside the nucleus. Electricity is simply the movement of charged particles. Most often, it is the flow of electrons. Each electron has a very small negative charge, which is measured in coulombs. The energy contained in these charged electrons can do work for us. When electrons are flowing, there is a current. Current is measured in amps and is defined as the net amount of charge that flows past a point per time. A very simple circuit is shown over here. As drawn, there is no current because the circuit is open. This means the light bulb won't be on. But if we flip the switch and close the circuit, electrons would be able to flow from the negative end of this battery through the loop and turn on the light. A few more key terms for you. Voltage is the difference in charge between two points on a conductor. This is the driving force that pushes electrons through a circuit. Not surprisingly, voltage is measured in volts and uses the symbol capital V. Resistance is how difficult it is to pass a current through a material. Materials like metals or salty water are conductors, which means they have low resistance and allow electrons to flow relatively easily. Materials like plastic, rubber, styrofoam are insulators, which means they have high resistance and impede the movement of electrons. Resistance is measured in ohms, whose symbol is the Greek letter omega. Current, voltage, and resistance are all related by this equation. This indicates that for a given system, if we double the voltage, then we would double the current. Conversely, if we double the resistance, we would cut the current in half. The physical measurements in this course will be done using the SI or the metric system of measure. A nice feature of this system is the ability to scale a standard measurement up or down by powers of 10 using a prefix. For example, if we see a measurement of 2.4 km, the standard unit is the m for meter. The prefix is k for kilo, which means 10 to the third power or 1,000. So altogether, this means 2.4 thousand meters. Let's look at this next similar example. 0.67 microseconds is shown. This symbol is the Greek letter mu, which we can see means micro or 10 to the negative 6 power or 1 millionth. Altogether, 0.67 microseconds is equal to 0 0.00000067 seconds. That is a very short amount of time. But thankfully, most modern computers are performing steps even faster than that. This table shows all of the commonly used metric prefixes. Although it is not required to memorize this table for this course, I recommend that you do so, especially within the range of nano to giga. You will save a significant amount of time by learning what nano means, rather than needing to reference a table. Regardless, the procedure for using metric prefixes is always the same. Identify the base unit, such as meter, second, gram, etc. Identify the prefix and scale the base unit by multiplying the power of 10 associated with that prefix. Two other terms that are critical when working with computers are period and frequency. They both relate to things that are happening in cycles or repetitive motions. Examples of this behavior are pendulums going back and forth, motors spinning in a circle, and computers operating on a clock. Period is simply a measure of the time it takes for a cycle to repeat, so it has units of seconds. If I push Charlotte on a swing and she returns to my hands every four seconds, 
then the period is four seconds. Frequency is the inverse of period. If you know the period, then you simply do one divided by the period to get the frequency. Its units are hertz, abbreviated HZ. One hertz equals one second to the negative one power. Back to the swing example, a period of four seconds provides a frequency of one over four hertz, or 0.25 hertz. This means that over the course of one second, one quarter of the swing is complete.